we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty God, help us to confess that there is nothing that is mine, and may we receive all the promised blessings that God gives. At this dawn, may we receive help. May we receive the Almighty One's help. May all things be solved. At this time, may there be a great realization. Those problems that aren't being solved help us to realize it because we cannot realize. And by God's love, may we receive solutions. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. Do you want to receive God's love? You have to receive God's love to go to heaven. And this love is faith. And yet you hate to receive love and just with your mouth you lie and say that you do want it. This is the problem. Do you want to receive God's love? As much as you receive his love, everything works out. And yet love is given by rebuke and yet you hate this. Let's find Revelations chapter 3 verse 19. It's because I love you that I discipline you and rebuke you. But you hate to hear rebuke, and yet you want solutions for your problems. What kind of heart of a thief is that? I can't, un it's unbelievable. When God's love comes to us, it comes as rebuke, it comes as correction, it comes as curses. And so you don't want to receive that, yet you want your family's problems to be solved. How can it be? So let's read together. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Amen. So when, it, so when you're taught to repent, you do it. But no matter how well you do it, after you become a servant, you hate to hear words that... Uh, uh, if You hate to hear good words. God already knows this. Proverbs. Chapter 29, verse 19. You see those people who don't do well. They refuse to listen. Those people who don't listen, those people who don't hear God's rebuke, they do not repent. As much as they don't repent, they and the household, it's a complete mess. So if you look at God's word, God's love, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. So if you love God, he gives you riches, honor, glory. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. He makes it so that money's poured out. So you love to receive money, and yet you hate God's love. How does that love come? It comes as curses and rebuke, and yet you hate this, especially those who have studied so many lies. Out of the maggots, they're the filthy maggots, and yet they, don't, they can't know themselves. So to those whom he loves, what does he give? Let's read again. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Amen. So, what does he want you to do? Why does he rebuke you? So you know. If he tells you just to repent, you won't do it. And so it's when you're cursed, when you're rebuked, it's when you hear that piercing, that's when you know what to repent. So if you don't, this is a dish, if you don't eat three times a day from this dish, so during the during the Korean War, there there are these uh, these chamber pots that are made from aluminium, and yet they cook food in that chamber pot. You know, there's nowhere else to cook it, so they would cook f rice in the chamber pot. So let's say it was burnt at the bottom. So what you've eaten from the morning. It's now burnt and you need to make lunch and dinner. So if you just leave it like that, can you make rice? So you know. So if you don't repent, it's not going to work. So if you don't repent, then you have to starve. Your family has to starve. So if the mother 
You know, if she just if she just sweeps around the bottom of the 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 burnt bottom. Is that going to get cleaned or not? Is it good to clean it quickly or to take months? So you know. So if we have to repent anyway, that's when we receive God's help. We have to repent so the troubles in our family end. Where there is sin, what sticks? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. It's demons that stick. Because you have sin, demons stick. So you have a strange personality. You have to go to hospital. It's because you have demons. Not only do you become crazy, but you have all sorts of problems. So God's love is saying, get rid of that quickly. So is that, good? Is that right or not? So this is God's promise. Pass to part. Do I want you to do well or do I want you to be ruined? So if you want to do well, quickly wash. And so that's why God only gives rebuke to those who he, whom he loves. And yet there are people who hate to hear rebuke. Let's read it again. How is it you can't realize just this one Bible verse? Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and re repent. Amen. So does he rebuke those who he hates? So do you want to receive God's love? God's love is faith. God's love is the Holy Spirit. You need to have God's love to go to heaven. So if you have this love, not only to go to heaven, but all your diseases are healed. By that love, your demons depart. By that love, your problems are solved. Why do you hate love? When that love comes to us, it comes to us as rebuke. It comes at the very least as rebuke. So why is it you hate rebuke so much? You know, I look around. There's nothing else to look at. Those people who are educated in Korea, you look at their households that are a mess. The spouses, they're sitting there as enemies. They're tormented worse than as if they're in hell. They're the fa families of people who are so educated. The descendants, they're so pitiful. So God's love is that we only have happiness and satisfaction and our children doing more well. So this is the way he wants you to go. Why do you hate it so much? There are people here who are very educated. So before you did forced air repentance and after you did forced air repentance, what's your heart like? What's my life like? What's my heart like and what's my spouse relationship like? How are my children being raised? If you want to receive love, it is rebuke. So you have problems because you don't have enough love. You don't have enough rebuke. So here, rebuke has to be poured out. Love has to be poured out unlimitedly. But you don't know that that love is rebuke. Is this our men? So this dawns help. Who gives it? It's God. So even now, if you repented as if you'd heard a lot of rebuke, that would be good. But you're not like that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20, you sin and then you forget. So then your conscience is seared. And so you're like, oh, I've not got, I don't have anything to do with that sin, but it is my sin. Is this our man? So this dawn, Koreans, they hate discipline and rebuke the most. That's why Korea, we couldn't get past that poverty. So from dawn, we have to hear rebuke properly. You see those many people who don't eat breakfast. You know, you should eat breakfast well. God says to eat that rebuke well. So this dawn with rebuke, what does what what is it you should do? You should only repent. So if you repent, you become clean or dirty. As much as you're clean, who comes? God's love can then enter inside of you. And this love brings about miracles. This love causes miracles. So then all our problems have to be solved. So from dawn, whether Pastor Park rebukes you or not, if I want to live, I have to make all of these rebukes to myself. And then I'll shed tears by myself. And yet God, he gives love. And this love brings about miracles. 
So if miracles happen, so it's to those whom he loves that he rebukes. If you if you can't hear rebuke, you're hated. You don't have love. You don't do well, your children don't do well. Someone who makes their children a mess, you think that you can love others? No, don't even, it doesn't even make sense. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22, that will never work. If I'm not right myself, how can I love anyone? If I don't have a relationship of love with God, how can I love anyone? You don't even love your own children. That's why your children are a mess. Because you don't love your children, you have no love for your neighbor. You need to discern. What kind of person am I? Do I love myself? Many people say they do. But why is it you hate to hear rebuke? Someone who hates to hear rebuke is someone who hates to hear uh, receive God's love. That person is evil. They have no love. So they have a bad space, sp spouse relationship. Their children are worse. They do such evil things to others. So let's discern correctly. And whoever you end up employing to employ the right person, if you're going to work for someone else, to work properly. If you're wrong, then to, to confess and say, you know what, I'm so wrong. You know, that's when we save our country, when we save the world. Oh, Pastor, how can we save the world if I'm like that? If anything, people will trust you even more because you are right. What kind of person am I? Aren't you so evil, so subtly evil, where God vomits you out? So if I repent like this, then whose heart becomes clean? My heart. You see these people who've written all these books, you know, in the world, they act as if they're so much better. You know, once they have this wicked heart, it happens exactly. So it happens exactly in the world. You know, th there's no way you can prevent it. But God, he can change that heart. If you repent straight away, he changes that heart. So what a precious promise this is. This morning, may our hearts change. May our hearts change. May our hearts change. So if you want your heart to change, those demons have to depart. If you want those demons to depart, you have to get rid of the sin. So inside of our hearts, those filthy things, that's what kills me. And yet we, don't, we can't wash that away. Why? Because you hate to hear rebuke, which is what loves you. So a pastor, you know, who's, before they start saying, oh, you dog, you know, if it's in the word, then it's me that should be confessing. So if I receive rebuke, then I should do two, three more by myself. You know, does Pastor Park have to do every single one? If Pastor Park says one thing, even after I say that, my heart's so hurt, I'm so busy repenting to God. Well, then, after I've heard that, I should do my own two, three rebukes and say, I am a maggot, you know, and confess this. And to wash it, then the demons will depart. Those troubles in our in our family they'll all depart we all have to receive this let's receive this blessing today god is so good so he only rebukes those whom he loves thank you god that scary rebuke yes it's so uncomfortable to hear but thank you so then what should I have to do? I have to repent when I hear this to say, that's right, Father. Those filthy sins are inside of me. There's even worse things inside. You know, if he says, oh, the bottom of your pot is burnt, to, to not only say, yes, the bottom's burnt, but the sides are burnt too. Let's bring it all out and then we'll become clean. Then God will use you. He'll use us so that our family will be blessed in good things. So you're, a, so you're an instrument of righteousness, Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Let's do well. From this dawn, let's do well. What is it that we have to do toward God? Let's read Acts chapter 20, verse 21. The only thing we do toward God is repent. So this dawn, it's God who helps. So all we have to do is repent. So to those whom he loves, God rebukes them. 
Why is it you hate to hear rebuke so much? But then you know what's really funny? It's not just Pastor Park who rebukes out of love. Your spouse, even though they're your enemy, if you repent, they become your best blessing. So it's your spouse that should give you the most blessings, and yet they appear as an enemy. So a chestnut may be sharp and pointy, but inside is a kernel. So your spouse, who you can't stand the most, you know, when they say something, to be able to receive that sweetly, that's when you're receiving God's love. So who is it that makes you meet your spouse as an enemy? Why do you say, oh, their true self's coming out? No, it's for me to receive blessings, for me to do well. It's, it's, they're saying words of love so that I'll do well. But you say, well, you know, Pastor Park can say those things, but not my spouse. No. You know, Pastor Park, he says things out of love, but your spouse may seem to be an enemy, but they're saying it out of love. So who is the whole world for? So it's good that you've memorized that. It's If it's for my sake, then that rebuke, who is it that is being loved? It's God who is loving me. But you go to work and you say, oh, they're believing in some other religion. That's why. So inside you're cursing them. But you never received it as 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 you receiving love. The whole world loves you because God loves you. So you're going to hear all these things that you hate. But that is what saves you. How do we live though? How have you received the rebuke that you heard today? This dawn is telling you to fix your destiny. Someone who receives a lot of rebuke, they learn a lot. They learn so much. That rebuke in the world, if you're if you're corrected, you just increase in schemings. You go the way of ruin. You may seem to do well then, but you increase in your schemings. So those people who've gone to jail and come out, they have so much more schemings, they come out as someone worse. But what about you and I? After we hear rebuke, because we can repent, God tells us to repent. Because we repent, who comes and helps us? So you know this. The Almighty One helps. When He helps, what does He help? He guards over our heart and our thoughts. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Well, we haven't read this, but we know this so well that we should only repent toward God. But you look at people who don't do well. They don't listen. So on Sunday, you may have been tired, but I was so tired too. Once you preach the word, do you know what happens? People who haven't done this, they don't know. You know, it's different to those fake sermons. My clothes are drenched in sweat. God's love, His word. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like my blood pressure is going to explode. So, but I do this laying down my life. Otherwise, I couldn't do this. Anyone who holds back their body, they can't do this. Those with demons, those who love themselves, they can't do this. And so, of course, they're only going to preach a fake sermon. So this time, this is the most precious time in my life. Let's read together. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So my heart, my thoughts, the one who can guard over them is only God. So what does it say in verse 6? It says to repent and to entrust all your worries. Is this amen? So if you repent this dawn, then God, he helps me. How? He helps my heart and my thoughts. He guards over them. So then my heart and my thoughts, you don't want a suicide. You know, you're not going to have thoughts of wanting to be ruined. God does according to your thoughts. But if he's guarding over your thoughts, there's nothing but I'm going to do well. I'm going to do more well. So when you have difficulty, if he's watching over your heart, if you pray to him, he's going to teach you and say, shouldn't you do this? 
So then, if you do that exactly, you'll do more well. So those things that you're not doing well, you haven't repented thoroughly, you haven't entrusted your heart to Him, and because He's not guarding over your heart, you do things by your thoughts and you're ruined. So from now on, let's pretend like we're, you know, we're, we've been put into hospital. Why are you wandering around? You know, why, why do you keep going home when, you know, your disease is going to come back? In, an, in a hospital, even, you know, even if you don't have an appetite, they will, you know, they will stop you from eating so they can be healed. But our flesh is an enemy of God. How is it that you feed your enemy, you do everything that your flesh wants you to do, and then you expect to hear God's voice? This flesh kills me, my family. It's an enemy. It's an enemy of God. You know, you eat whatever you want. How can you expect to hear God's voice? Even Jesus, when he was led by the Spirit, he killed his flesh. So how can we be better than that than him? So if you have a problem, but don't do it out of your lust. If God gives you a heart of fasting, you know, or if not, then just stay here and pray. Just because someone comes, you know, don't go off there and chat. My problem, it's only me and God that knows it. So then I have to have a relationship with God. Why go over to where other people are talking and then spend the day gossiping? And you don't even end up praying even one hour. You're not even clean. And then you go around so dirty with demons stuck to you. And then you say, I've prayed at church for two days and, and there's nothing's happening. No, if, you, if you're stuck to God, straight away you'll receive um, good, some news. So even though I'm worse than you, because I repent, I'm forgiven. Once I repent and I hear God's voice, I go and I move exactly. And then God, he brings about miracles. So don't I witness to you many things? Do, you know, do I have to always be talking about those things? All you have to do is according to the word. If you connect that el electricity, the light will turn on. So you haven't been connected. Why is it you pray but nothing happens? Because God wants to help you. Do you know how much he wants to help you? What's he doing to the door of your heart? Where is that? Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. He's knocking on the door of our hearts. Why? Because he wants to come inside of you and guard your heart and your thoughts. Why is it you don't repent so that he can't come inside of you? From today, let's receive the right help. So if God watches over my heart and my thoughts, he's not going to give you thoughts to be ruined. He's not going to give you thoughts where you want to suicide. He's not going to give you thoughts to harm others. So what am I like? What am I like? What's my heart like? Are you worrying and you're anxious? You're a filthy, evil person, the worst of evil. You say you're lonely, you're the worst of evil. So then what should I do? My heart has to be at peace because God gives peace. He gives all peace. If you don't have this, then you haven't repented. So do you expect to receive blessings when you haven't repented? Do you expect to receive blessings when you're walking with demons? There's nothing but disasters and curses. You may end up killing all of your family. Why go that way? So worries and anxieties. Let's repent and entrust trust everything. Let's find Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Once you entrust, then health and your skin looking good, all of that will happen. But if you have worries, there is, it's only disasters and curses, your body will start to rot. Not having worries and anxieties, that is the best medicine. As soon as you're able to feed yourself, you start seeking out these tonics and restoratives. But you don't know that it's the joy in your heart that is the best medicine. This joy, that, uh, this joy is given by God. So, so, oh, pastor, I have cancer. That's because you haven't had this best medicine. There's someone that you hate. It's because there's someone that you hate. You haven't repented of your heart. Some people will say, Oh, pastor, I try to repent, but I have no tears. 
But then if I make them stand in the street and I, and I curse them as a dog, then they start to cry. It's because I haven't cursed myself as a dog. I'm mistakenly thinking I'm someone so good. You know, when I said to them, you're a dog, according to the Bible, you know, they started to cry. And I said, you know, oh, those tears came out so easily. And he's like, oh, that's because you said it. So in other words, you've never repented that you're like a dog. It's God who says that you're a dog. So let's wake up and repent properly. So rebuke is the love that saves me. It's love. So Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, let's read it. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Amen. So this joy in our heart, it's when God guards over our hearts that we have this joy because it's only God who gives all joy. And this is the best medicine. If I eat this best medicine, why is it people keep seeking out all these restoratives and tonics when you have a baby inside of you? The health of a baby. If you're an enemy of God, how can you expect them to have health? Your children who are studying for their entrance exams, even if you feed them dragon horns, you'll just end up shedding tears. After eating that, that child becomes an enemy of God. And all they do is think about fornication. They, every time, they can't even pick up a pen. You know, why, why do you raise them like that? You ruin them. A baby inside of your womb or your future thousand generations. If you want them to be healthy, if you have joy in your heart, you'll be healthy. A thousand generations will be healthy. Is this our men? This is the blessing we have to receive. This is the blessing we have to do well with. God is so good. This dawn, let's receive this help. Is this our men? So to repent a lot, and as much as you have joy, then you have this good medicine. But then worries makes your your bones rot, your, your blood rots. Those with cancer, you look three generations above. They've passed filthy things down. The first generation was 100 Ks. The second generation is two is 150 kilograms and then the third generation you know is 200 so that's what comes down that's why you die so that's what you have to repent of so where is there a lie in god's word there's nothing but him saving us so why is this it's because i'm living like a dog pig my life is like a maggot so let's confess whatever comes down from our ancestors and let's eat this good medicine and to be healthy and for our children to do well and to be a patriot. Let's all receive this blessing. May all our problems be solved. Let's all pray. So after you repent, it's not just that you eat good medicine. It saves me, my children, this country, our neighbors. Why is that I don't have joy and I'm not being released? There's something that your ancestors have done. You say, oh, I can't remember, and you're not repenting. Now let's confess. There is something that our ancestors have done, something filthy, and I'm, I'm still holding on to it. And that's why already my family sees me as bad. My relatives and friends, they don't see me as a man. So there's a problem. We have to hear this as God's rebuke and to confess that I'm worse than a dog pig. So, whatever God's word is, to confess even more beyond that. And so, let's eat this good medicine and with and with health to have this wisdom, knowledge, understanding and prudence and to have a blessed family. Let's pray. Father, we've lived so wrongly. How much have we lived with the wrong thoughts? Love is rebuke. We want love, yet we hate rebuke. How detestable is this? From now, may we realize correctly. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.